So we're going to be looking at inverse problems here for percentages, and this is when we're working backwards. If we know the new sales price, or how much a house is worth now, or how much a car is worth now, we're working backwards to find out how much it used to be worth before it either went up or went down by a percentage. So we have to be able to figure out um, what percentage of the original this new price that they give us is. And so the first thing I'm going to look at is how we go about doing that, how we go about figuring out this percentage idea. So if you increase in percentage, I want you to think about doing 1 plus whatever the percentage is that you've increased divided by 100. So you always end up with a decimal, like a 1 point something. So you get a 1 point something that you fill in the blanks for. If we think about that, if I have um, $10 and I increase by 5%. Okay, well, I can figure that out in a few ways, but um, one thing that you can do is find 5% of 10. So we could go 10 times 0 0.05 and you get 0 0.5 dollars, and then you can add that back onto the 10. So 10 plus 0 0.05. Oops, sorry, 10 point plus that new amount, that 50 cents that you've got on there. So this is now equal to $10.50. But what percentage of the original is this, is what I'm asking. So it's got the $10 in there, and that was the original. So the original you can always think about as 100%. It's got the 100% in there, and how much more got added onto it? That was plus 5%. So that's going to be 105%. And then if we can think about converting that to a decimal, it's 1.05 that we're going to be timesing by. So that's what's going on here. I'm taking 1 plus the percentage divided by 100, which becomes the decimal there, 1.05. So if I have something and I increase it by 5%, it's 1.05 of the original amount. And once you know what this percentage is, we can use it to decrease or increase the... I mean, we can use it to work backwards. So, if we look at a different example for decreasing, um, we're going to always have 1 minus the percentage divided by 100. So always 1 minus whatever the decimal of the percent is, and here you're going to end up with a 0 point something. Because 1 minus is going to get you below 1. As an example for that, if I had ten dollars and I decreased by five percent. One way that we can always do this again is find the five percent of ten which gets you to be fifty percent and then if we're decreasing we're taking that away so it's ten minus zero point five gets you nine dollars and fifty cents. Okay. So what I'm looking at here is that $10 was the original 100%. I'm taking away 5%, so I am ending up with 95% of the original. So that 950 is 95% of the original. Just like here, that 1050 was 105% of the original. So one's increased and one's decreased. And if I convert this 95 into a decimal, I get 0 0.95, and that's the number that I'm looking for here in that situation. So it's probably a bit abstract, but let's take a look at this in practice. What's important for us is that if we want to go from the original to the new, we can times by that decimal amount, and if we're working backwards from the new to the original, we're going to divide by that decimal amount. So here, we're going to be dividing by 1 minus the percentage over 100, and here we're going to be timesing by 1 plus the percentage over 100. Now these bits here with a 1 plus and the 1 minus, I really want you to be able to think about doing that in your head, that you can go straight to what the decimal is, straight to the 1 point whatever, or straight to the 0 point whatever. So it'll help simplify things a lot less steps for you along the way. But we'll look at how that works. So again, if you're going from the original to a new price, somebody tells you that you're increasing by some amount, you can just times by that, and if you're working backwards, you just divide by that amount. Um, so, let's take a look here. 
The new cost of a plane tic ticket is a 20% increase from the original price. The ticket will now cost $240. What was the original price? So here's where we gotta work. Now a lot of people want to think I'll just find 20% of $420 and work backwards, but it does not work out that way. So we can prove that to ourselves, but let's take a look at what we need to do. We're going to go from the original to the new, and we'll put some information in here. In this case, I'm actually going to ignore that top part, because we have the new price, the now, you have to think about the, what tense you're talking about here, now is the new, so that's 420. To work backwards, we're going to divide, and we need to figure out whether I'm doing 1 plus or 1 minus. So a 20% increase, that's going to be a plus. If I was at 100% and I've increased by 20%, that's going to be 120% and my decimal is going to be 0 0.2 or 0 0.20 if you want to think about that. So again, that was you were at 100%, you're increasing by 20%, you get to 120%, so you've got 1.2 when you convert that back to decimal. So here if we divide by 1.2, we'll get to our original amount that we don't know. So 420 divided by 1.2, and you get $350. So just to keep that in mind, if you just try and do 20% of 420 and then subtract it off, you will not get the same amount. And that is because this 20% increase was 20% of the original amount, which is smaller than the part that you now have. So you've got to work backwards by knowing that 420 is 120% of the original amount, and we're dividing it by 120 to figure out what the original amount was. If we take a look at another example, a store is having a 20% off sale. The sale price of a jumper is sorry, $44. What was the price before the sale? So now we need to think about present tense and past tense, right? The sale price of a jumper is, this is the now, this is the new price, this is what's happening at the moment, and the price before, this is the original, that's the past tense, going backwards. So again, original, new, we're going from new, which we have, to original, $44, we'll need to divide, and we'll need to divide by a decimal amount here. So the store is having a 20% off sale. That means it's going away. It's discounting 20% less. So if you are at 100%, you've taken 20% off. What's left? 80%. And as a decimal, that's 0 0.8. So basically, this $44 is 80% of the original price. So you're paying only 80% of what it cost originally. So that's what we're dividing by is the 0 0.80. So 44 divided by 0 0.80, and you're going to get $55. So the jumper was originally $55. It's on sale by 20%, so we can take 20% it off, and we'll get to 44. And to work backwards, you've got to go 44 divided by the 80% to figure out what the original was. Do a few more examples here. Spencer now has 440 friends on Facebook. This is a 22% decrease, so we're going down for the amount of friends he had last month. Find out how many friends he had last month. So that last month, think about that being past tense. That's what we're considering our original. And now has 44, that's the new. So original, new, he has 440 friends at the moment, and we're trying to work backwards. And this is a 22% decrease, so if we were at 100% and we've gone down by 22%, we get to 78%, and as a decimal, that's just 0 0.78. So 440 is 0.78 of the original amount, so we'll divide by 0 0.78. And what we get here is 440 divided by 0 0.78 is equal to... five hundred and sixty four point one friends and since friends don't really come in decimals we're gonna round that to five hundred and sixty four friends last month Okay, so 
And basically what we're doing is we're trying to untwine this equation and just if you want to see that for yourself real quick if I had the original 564 percent and I times it by 0 0.8 I'll get 440 so if I had the original 564 friends if I'm losing 20 percent that means I only want to keep the 80 percent so I want to find out the 80 percent of the original amount and that gets me the 440 so if you think about working in reverse, we don't if we don't know what that is, that if you times by 80, you got 440. We're doing the reverse here with the algebra. Dividing by 80, or sorry, 80% to get to the original amount that's there. So I've got a few more examples, but I might um, just work through those quickly. If you think you got it, go on. If not, might want to pause this and see if you can think about it yourself first before you look at the answer. So Spencer bought a polo pony and has trained it up. The, polo, the pony is now worth 15% more, so that means more, than when Spencer bought it. He can now sell the pony for this much amount. How much should he pay for the pony initially? So again, initially this is going back to our original, so you can think about the original is here, new is here, and we need to be working backwards, so it's dividing. Now we need to think about what percentage. So he had a pony, and he's trained it, and increased the value by 15%. So that's 100 plus 15 is going to give you 115%, which is a decimal is 1.15. So we're going to divide by 1.15 of the new amount. So 12500 zero, zero, divided by 1.15. And you get 10869.56, roughly, dollars that he would have paid for that polo pony originally. So again, this makes sense to us. That's a number that's less than what he has the pony worth now. And we've got that by working backwards, working out what that 15% would be to figure it out here. So finding out that it's 115% of the original amount and dividing it away. Sparky weighs 7.8 kgs. This is a 15% decrease going down from last year. So this is the past tense, so we're thinking this is going to be the original. How much did Sparky used to weigh? So this is going backwards in time. That's the past. It's the original. So we're looking for the original. We have the new 7.8. Dividing it, you're going to get our percentage here. We were at 100 minus 15% gets you to 85% and as a decimal that's 0 0.85 so 0 0.85, 7.8 divided by 0 0.85 and you get 9.18 kgs if we round it so that's how much Sparky used to weigh in the past so again, if you're going from the new to the original, you need to think about what is that total percentage that I've got and divide it backwards. If you're decreasing, you'll have a zero point something. And if you're increasing, you'll have a one point something.